YouTube. It's Ben here with the 60 gallon cichlid tank and today's topic is five deadly misconceptions in the African cichlid hobby. I hope you find this helpful and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about some fatal misconceptions in the hobby. And um, I'll give you five, maybe uh, maybe a couple extra bonus ones. And um, the first one is one that I got into a discussion with a, uh, a gentleman just a couple days ago. And it's that bacteria, your beneficial bacteria, is in the water column. This person had, uh, had taken the water from one tank and put it into another tank and assumed that that tank was now ready to go and then moved fish into it. That is a, a catastrophic mistake. What makes it even worse is that your initial test results are going to look good because you brought over what was going on initially in the fully cycled tank. So it'll give you an incorrect impression initially. So you think everything's good. You bring over the fish, like he did, and then your tank proceeds to crash because there is no established bacteria to go ahead and handle the ammonia that is being uh, produced by those fish and so the tank immediately will have a spike in ammonia and nitrite and you're going to have some dead fish. So number one misconception, fatal misconception, that bacteria is in the water column. Another uh, misconception, and um, not sure if this is so much a misconception as it is uh, faulty logic, and that's, um, that will never happen to me. This results in um, not having uh, meds on hand, not taking steps that are um, normally, you know, common because they feel that uh, because they haven't had the disaster it's not going to happen or couldn't happen to them it's a little foolhardy and um, how do you go uh, what do you do about something like that well you, you you maintain a backup heater because heaters do burn out because yours hasn't doesn't mean it won't You keep meds on hand, your basic meds, you know, your uh, API General Cure, maybe some Melifex, some Pima, and uh, maybe um, some Ick medication. In my case, uh, Cordon, Cordon Ick Attack, recommended to me by IFG. I've been under, even Alexander a while back, it worked phenomenally well. And uh, you keep these things, you know, at hand. And uh, sort of like insurance, you know, you buy it and you hope you don't have to use it. But boy, if you need to, it's sure good you have it. Here's another misconception. I never quarantine. I've never had a problem. So I continue to never quarantine. Now, um... You know, nature has a way of uh, making us pay for that kind of uh, that kind of thinking. It waits until you get a well-stocked tank with uh, you know about a thousand dollars worth in fish, and then it uh, it has you plop a fish in there with a very bad parasite that gets to work on your stock and kills off half of them before you get it under control. As your fish mature and become bigger, they become more valuable. And so these precautions become more and more vital. So, because you haven't had a problem, 
by not quarantining your uh, new arrivals doesn't mean that you will not have a problem. All right? Next fatal mistake. I don't test my water. I've never had a problem. I just do water changes and I uh, maintain my filters and I never do any tests. I just watched a video by a very highly experienced, uh, very ex highly experienced uh, fish keeper and he was going insane trying to figure out why his fish were dying off and he tried everything including several medications, large water changes, just a whole variety of steps, drove him nuts. And finally, after spending, uh, after realizing that he had gotten lazy on his uh, testing, he ran some tests and discovered, for reasons that I don't really recall right now, that his pH had crashed. And instead of being around 8, where it normally was, and where it was in the other tanks that he was maintaining, it was sitting around uh, 7, or maybe in the high 6s, I forget exactly. But the fish were under severe stress and were dropping like flies. So, um, you know, ultimately what you do is your business. How you do things really is your business. But I really, I highly recommend that you uh, test from time to time. Get a barometer, get a reading on what's going on. And uh, maybe you can cut something off before it becomes, uh, you know, devastating to the tank as it did for this person who lost um, just some beautiful fish. Here's another uh, fatal mistake. Researching after the fact. You see this sometimes in young fish keepers who buy a fish because it's pretty and then when problems start, they do some research and discover that they've purchased a fish that is completely and totally incompatible with the fish that they have. Or they discover that um, how they're filtering is not going to be sufficient or the oxygen they're providing the agitation or surface breakup is not enough or they discover something and uh, but it's after the fact it's you know closing the barn after the horse has fled you know <laughs> one of those kind of things so um, advice before you make major moves do a little research before the fact and then move into that move, move into that new move, whether it's adding fish or um, setting up a tank like I'm doing currently. Do some research, get some different opinions, visit some websites, watch some videos, some great uh, great places out there. Seriously, fish, uh, Cichlid Forum, Cichlid-Forum.com. Um, Jay Wilson has some great videos. IFG has great videos. Uh, Evan Alexander, I mentioned him earlier. And of course, KG Tropicals Tank Talk on Facebook. That's John Hudson's group. Also, a lot of these um, Facebook groups, including mine, Ben O'Cichlid, but also um, IFG's uh, Tips and Tricks and uh, Aquatic Lounge and... Uh, Tank Talk, you know, you've got a lot of good fish keepers there, cyclic conversations, um, and you've got a lot of good people uh, who are willing to um, uh, provide advice. So, um, you know, take take a few uh, take a few extra steps, do the research ahead of time. You know, patience. You know, patience is really a big a big asset in this hobby. It's easy to get impatient. You want to have that beautiful tank now. And so you don't cycle it completely uh, or correctly, or you throw some fish together because uh, you, you've noticed them in other people's videos and you thought they were beautiful. And then you discover that uh, when you go back and look at their videos that um, they did not have them in the same tank with fish that you have. And now you have a problem. You have a fish that's getting torn up. And you need to take action and isolate or rehome that fish. So it creates problems. 
So um, that's it. I mean, there's there's uh, certainly other tips, other uh, fatal mistakes, you know, uh, things like uh, you throw uh, throwing out, putting in fresh sponges with every uh, with every filter maintenance. You know, don't don't do that, please. Uh, the manufacturer of uh, sponges would love for you to do that because, of course, they sell more sponges. But the truth is that your sponges are loaded with um, with good bacteria, and a gentle squeeze is usually all they need. I have sponges in my canisters right now that will probably last two or three years or more. I'll keep using them and squeezing them out until they fall apart and can't be used any anymore. So... Um, Another one, of course, is uh, algae. People have uh, algae gets a bad rap. You know, algae is bad, but algae, you know, is is um, especially if you have uh, if you have bunas, you know, algae is uh, not a bad thing. You know, they like picking at it. Certainly, the plecos like it, and uh, and it also, I I believe, it is because it's plant life. It can help with uh, nitrates. All right. So anyway, those are some tips. I hope they help. And uh, before ending off, I just want to wish everybody uh, uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year and all that good stuff. And um, I really want to thank all of you for um, for taking the time to watch my videos, to uh, visit my channel, and also to visit the Facebook page, the Ben O'Sicklin Facebook page. And um, you know, you're all you're all really appreciated. Uh, we have a really good group of people here that that uh, get on here and make comments, and certainly if you can think of a uh, a uh, a fatal or catastrophic misconception, uh, put it down in the comments below. You know, we can make this a, a bit of a reading or a bit of a learning experience for other fish keepers. So uh, certainly uh, provide us with some some of your experience. You know what you've come across that you think other fish keepers should know about. So um, happy holidays to all of you. Thank you, everybody, for getting the channel over 2,500 uh, subscribers. I think it's uh, it's well over 2,500 now. And uh, for getting the Facebook group, Facebook group over 1,000 members, okay? Thank you so much. You guys are the best. You guys rock. You know, I, I appreciate each and every one of you, all right? So that's it for now, and thank you for tuning in.